Hi guys, uh, welcome to this week's lesson. We're following on from last week where we were covering um, Alla Prima portrait painting. And this week we are going to be carrying on um, with this wet painting after having added the shadows or kind of blocking in the shadows um, and then subsequently adding some variation within the dark so there's certain areas which are kind of slightly darker um, some little colour shifts, so reds and yellow colour shifts but generally there wasn't a load of variation um, in this particular piece but we might find some more today after we start to add the half tones. So adding the half tones is probably one of the longest uh, or like the most substantial sections of this sort of piece um, just because that's where a great deal of the detail is so once we actually get into the lights um, we're going to be blocking it in trying to create a sense of uh, three-dimensionality to the face uh, with our values and then um, also going back and correcting things so this is the point at which we make general corrections to say the shadows um, before adding details with smaller brushes um, so this is where we really establish everything that's going on in the piece beyond the initial shapes. So I'm going to be starting with a, a reasonably broad brush. I'm going back to this quite thick brush. Um, get a little bit of a wipe off. And I'm going to begin by blocking in my darker half tones, as we often do. So partly this process is finding what exactly what colours you're looking for for your half tones. so once you start to add them it's pretty dark in this side of the face it's not too bad, possibly maybe a little bit too red so add a bit more yellow to it, maybe go with some yellow ochre possibly grey it out a little bit more Probably a little bit too grey with that, so we can go back, add a little bit more colour by mixing in some more cadmium yellow. Yeah, and that's a little bit better. It's quite a good darker half tone. So we can get that half tone just to run along pretty much that entire edge um, where the face turning into the shadow and I find a tiny bit of it in here but the neck's actually quite light so if we stick with that as our darkest half tone we can then start to kind of progressively lighten it so we're adding some white um, and as we're lightening it we're trying to maintain a similar hue and increase the chroma so that means that it's the same colour on the spectrum but we want a more intense version of that colour as we go lighter. So I've added a little note there, which probably doesn't go quite high chroma enough. So I'm going to try to maintain the value is quite a good value shift. Yeah, that's a bit better. So I'm going to try to add my half tones in sort of patches which roughly follow the, the general nature of the form um, of the face as I work. So I'm kind of looking for planes in the face, basically. And we can put a little bit sort of up there. We can have some half tones coming out of this cast shadow over the neck. Some of these half tones might just be slightly visible on the far cheek. Kind of coming out of the nose there, bridge of the nose. Down there as well. Possibly just underneath that eye, maybe underneath this one as well. bit there. So you see we're sort of working around knowing that the lightest portion of the face is up here we're kind of progressively working into that um, 
as we add these half tones. I'm just going to go in with a smaller brush um, and add a slightly different set of half tones to the nose. And this is because um, we'll look at this a little bit later as well, but the nose will tend to have um, slightly more reddish hues than the rest of the face. Particularly the forehead tends to be kind of, I guess, the basic colour of the face. Um, and then the nose is redder and the lower part of the face will tend to be a little bit bluer. Probably gone a little bit too extreme there. risen up a little bit to hide that half tone, that dark half tone of the nose. I'm going to mix a slightly lighter colour, which I think roughly works, just to pull it down a bit. Something like that's not too bad. Quite good actually. So we could leave it at that for the nose. Just wanted a slightly different hue. It's also a colour that probably would appear um, in these cheeks, so the cheeks also tend to be a bit more pink than the rest of the face and also the lips, so we can go down there add some lip half tones possibly not quite pink enough for the lips, but we'll see As I say, the half tones under the jaw are going to be a bit greyer, a bit more blue, so I can mix those with a, a mixture of black. So that's these ones. Just under there. Which maybe go maybe went a little bit too grey, but we'll see. Um, so now I've kind of added those slight details in, I can jump back. To the more general colours in the face, or certainly working over this brow, I'll probably start to block this brow in now. Um, so, still using my bigger brush, going back to that more yellow hue, can start to block some extra planes of the face. So, it's not quite high chroma enough. So, add a bit more cad yellow into my mixture. Going a little bit too yellow, a bit more red, possibly also lighten it a little bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. So we use that for these two patches in here. Also, this little dip underneath the brow. I'm going to get a little bit lighter again. It's about the right value, but we want it to be a little bit more yellow. Yeah, so it's not too bad. Look that all the way across. Forehead. And it's possibly 
it's not too far off, but it's maybe not quite high chroma enough. So I might jump back to this really big brush that I had at the beginning and mix a slightly separate, less muddy version of the colour, just because this is going to be our, the lightest portion of our face. Yeah, something like that's a bit better, I think. So I block that in as a single plane initially, and then I also want an even lighter plane. Just up here. So it's not a bad value, but I want to probably nudge it down a little bit and make it a bit more give it a bit more colour. It's a bit too pink, but we're almost getting there. So, yeah, there we go. So we've just boosted the chroma slightly. This top plane on the head. A little bit there on the brow that catches it as well. But that's not too bad as a general kind of structure of values um, working over the forehead. So that same colour, but possibly slightly, or that same value, but slightly pinker, could then go into the cheeks. As well. And maybe a tiny bit down here, just at the chin. And a little bit for the bridge of the nose. be working out from that a little bit as we add more detail. You can see you can get quite a lot done just with a, a really big brush. It's a little bit of a struggle um, when you're first doing it but it does just help to give it's a bit more freshness to the work so um, it's just mixed up a slightly darker pink there to go underneath. next to that lighter section. Back there again. And I can then drop back down to a slightly darker colour that's a little bit too yellow just down to the neck. A little bit more yellow. Drop that to this slightly smaller brush. These kind of connecting sections, I'm going to actually use a really small brush. So you've probably already got the right colours on your palette to do these. If funny things get muddy, you can do a bit of a clean or just boost the chrome a bit.
So those half tones probably have gone a little bit too too low chroma. So I'm just going to boost that with this. Go back to this broader brush. Try and mix up some purer colours. I'm just going to patch them on a bit more thickly over the top. I don't know why that's not too bad for that light. <coughs> Down here as well. So that's helping a little bit. Um, still feels slightly on the low chroma side. So could go in and just rework some of these. Darker half tones. Emerging from the shadows. And use another smaller brush just to reinforce some of these shapes. You might find um, in the process of getting your values and colours right, you lose some definition in the shapes. But that's okay, you'll be able to retrieve the shapes later as things develop more. At this stage, the important thing is to try to get the right balance in values just across the range of the piece. <coughs> values and colours. Um, so it's slowly taking shape.
Some of the major color shifts beyond this kind of general pinky, um, pinky yellow skin tone are these eyeballs, which are in slightly in shadow, so the lower portion of them is a kind of blue grey, and then the upper portion, which is more covered in shadow, which is kind of slightly more steely grey. And something in another half tone of the eyes. Um, I don't actually have a pure blue, they are blue in the, the reference, but I don't have a pure blue, so I'm going to make a kind of greenish, greenish colour with a mixture of black and black and yellow. That's going to be my, my colour for reflected lights in the eyes. Drop another more pure black down over the top for the pupils. And I'll go back into these little portions here, brow as it sits over the top. drops down into this top eyelid. Just cast a shadow down onto those eyes. Those reds are quite good now, um, kind of both in the lips and the nose actually, possibly could be pushed a little bit more in the lips, um, but makes me think there's probably not, comparatively, the the colours in the um, in the face generally are a little bit too low chroma, so the the more yellowy colours don't feel high chroma enough, I would say. So, particularly looking at transitions, kind of going from that pink um, into these half tones or kind of almost shadows actually. And so we're going to try to correct those a bit. Might begin just a little bit of burnt umber just to reinforce those half tones. Something to work out of. Possibly it maybe just got a little bit too weak um, against the that initial yellow that we painted in at the beginning of the piece. Um, so I'll do that and then give my 
I brush a bit of a clean. And then try to find... And possibly it feels slightly too yellow as well, I would say. So I'm just going to both lighten... Well, increase the chroma and the, the general sort of thickness. It's a bit too extreme. So you can drop that. So it's starting to reconcile um, those half tones a bit. I'm going to have to go back and revisit the lighter portions now as we've lost a little bit of clarity in them. Um, but those corrections have just kind of generally helped a um, sense of form across the piece, which is good. And I'm just going to... brush uh, clean and then mix up a new batch of a, a lighter colour just to enhance those lightest portions over the head. Trying to re rework that jaw as well. The 
something like that doesn't work too badly. And drop back to our darkest half tones and kind of that. These little shapes here, just underneath the mouth again. That's working a lot better than it was. Can still go in and lighten and increase the chroma in these cheeks. Just because they're close to the centre of the form, same for this nose. Can lighten the top of that nose. And just push the chroma a bit up there. And the valley slide up. Let's go and mix on the canvas there. So those half tones are starting to come together better now. In the process of adjusting them, I've lost some of the shadow shapes. So this is a point at which you'd want to jump back to some of your darker colors and kind of rework around the face. Um, now that everything's in, it's a bit clearer what's going on as a general rule as well, which is, which is helpful. Um, It's just a sort of constant process of refinement in various ways, that's what we're looking for. And just before I go back and correct those shadows, I'll just block in colours for this ear. Ears tend to be quite pink as well, similar to the kind of this general section of the face typically is the, the most pink area. So one thing I've lost um, which is reasonably significant is this shadow underneath the lower lip, uh, just under here. So
make sure that's back in place. Also some little dark notes we've lost in the mouth. Um, you'll tend to find there's not like a, a kind of continuous line across the mouth. Um, it tends to break up a bit and get a, a deeper cleft um, in the very inside of it um, and then at the edge of the mouth where it kind of wraps back on itself. So I'm going to go around, as I say, and just refine these edges. Um, basically correcting any shapes that we've lost in the process of putting in these half tones. You can see by adjusting that um, edge down the side of the face, it kind of makes a bit more sense of the, the forms that we're looking at on the inside. So always think about the relationship between external and internal forms while you're working. Finally, so it's not too bad as far as the face is concerned. But we probably want to just block in some colour for the hair as well. Um, so I'll swap back to a different brush. I'll probably just use yellow ochre, I think, although that maybe comes out a bit too much like a flesh tone. So I'll drop to maybe a mixture of cad yellow and yellow ochre. I just want to find those portions of the hair which are catching light. In the, the next uh, section, which will be the final section, we're just going to be looking at how you, how you can actually develop that hair a bit, but there's a lock there that goes down. And here as well, there's some sections of hair. Into a little bit of a green. There's 
this is actually mostly hair dropping down into that portion of the head. Um, that's not too too bad for the hair as it stands. We can maybe add a little bit more of a transition colour here because it's not all quite that. Generally, actually, that golden. We don't want to add too much detail again, you're just kind of working the brush. Um, and lastly, I'm going to block in a slightly different colour background just so that the face stands out a little bit more. So, as it is, everything's quite kind of generally yellow. So, I'm going to mix. a more kind of neutral background. Which will help us distinguish uh, where the hair ends and also um, make the colours in the face a little bit, give them a little bit more clarity which will be good for distinction. So because that yellow ochre is wet I can pretty much just paint into the yellow ochre. Doing that makes me notice that probably the head's ever so slightly kind of too narrow, so I'm just going to add a little bit of bulk to the back of the hair. That's probably not too, not too bad, which actually gives us a little bit more width into the rest of the face, um, which probably requires, hmm, not sure actually. I might just go back and cut into it a little bit more with this background colour. Basically, if I'd pushed the back of the head out too far, it would have meant shifting the ear across a bit, and when you're working on these kind of time-sensitive pieces, it's, it's not necessarily worth it just for the sake of kind of minor accuracy. If you're already generally capturing um, your subject, you don't really want to have to do major changes if they're not going to make a huge difference ultimately to the piece. So I'm just kind of blocking in a little bit of a gradient. Or it will highlight there on that side of the head. Just over here, carry it on. And one last thing, last of a major difference, or thing I'd like to correct at the end of this session, is this little bit of half tone. Between the ear and the and the head there. Actually, might make it into a shadow, seems to work a little bit better. Yeah, it's a bit of an improvement, I think. But for this session, I'm going to leave it there. Um, and the next week, we're going to be going back and adding kind of highlights and refining things. 
It'll be similar to this week, but um, there's a few kind of differences in what we'll be doing. But basically, we've established our kind of general halftone scheme um, as we want it in in this session. So hopefully that was interesting, and I'll see you guys next week.